Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, we are talking about five cheaper alternatives to really, 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 really good speakers. Doesn't that sound exciting? So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about cheaper alternatives to already awesome speakers, which makes them cheap awesome speakers. question comes up a lot in comments, sometimes on live streams, sometimes in patron zooms. And it goes a little something like this. Hey, I know that the KLH Model 5s are great. Are there any more affordable options out there that will give me sometimes a little bit of the magic of that speaker, but be not expensive? Most of the times the answer to that is no. There's a reason why that speaker's more expensive. And there's always a little bit of magic associated with that speaker. However, not everybody can afford every speaker. So I racked my brain thinking, what are some great alternatives to very good speakers? And I think I've come up with a few that just might scratch that more expensive speaker itch. Or if you can't afford them, then I think these are great alternatives. I don't want to give you the impression that the alternatives I'm going to talk about are as good as they're more expensive counterparts. Normally they're not. Now, at this point I've listened to a lot of speakers. So if you want a little bit of that speaker flavor, the one you can't afford, then these are great alternatives. The Kef LS50 and the Ascend Acoustics CBM 170 SE bookshelf speakers. Now, they don't make the KEF LS50 anymore, all right? And I've never heard the KEF LS50 meta. I am only going to be talking about speakers that I have had in the house. So nothing I've heard at a audio show or anything like that. Just speakers that I have hands-on experience and I've listened to in my home. I don't really think it's fair to say I heard it down at the Duluth audio show. So I know exactly what it sounds like. Not saying anybody does that. Anyway, the Ascend Acoustics, when I listened to them, they had a very engaging mid range. Now, I didn't love the CAF LS50 all that much, but the CAF LS50 did have a very engaging and somewhat magical mid range. Both of these speakers, the CAF LS50 and the Ascend Acoustics, don't have a huge amount of bass. I think the mid-range is the strength on both of these speakers. The difference, however, is that the Ascend Acoustics comes in at $368 a pair, whereas the CAF LS50 Metas come in at $1,600 a pair. Now, if you're still interested and you're dead set on getting a pair of CAF LS50s, the used market is replete with them, which should tell you something about this speaker. Point being is if you're looking for a pair of KEF LS50 or probably even the KEF LS50 Metas, you can go on the used market and probably find a decent pair at 50% or maybe even less than retail. Another great way to get yourself a pair of KEF LS50s. And if you buy them used for less than half, you may be able to afford a subwoofer to actually get them sounding like a real speaker. Just kidding. Kidding. I'm kidding. KEF LS50. Are great. Actually, I do want to get a pair of the metas in and add a subwoofer and see what all the hubbub is about. The Klipsch Heresy. You know, for the longest time, people get really mad at me and how I said clips. I said it's Klipsch. Yeah. Anyway, sometimes I'd actually say it correctly at the beginning of the video, but then towards the end, I'd start saying clips. So, it's Klipsch. Anyway, the Heresy. I was able to get those in-house and they're fantastic. Very engaging, very different, a different kind of speaker. However, I think they're three grand, maybe even 3,500 a pair at this point, and they're beautiful looking. You know, they have real wood veneer, the Heritage Vibe speaker. They're cool, they actually lean it. That speaker's so cool, it just leans back like this, and then aims directly at you from the floor. 3500 is prohibitively expensive for the vast majority of people that are interested in the hi-fi hobby. 
But there's another speaker out there that is also made by Klipsch that is on sale, kind of being discontinued, which is a fantastic alternative to the Heresies. And I actually think it sounds better than the Heresies. And that is the RP6000F. These speakers are a lot different, obviously. The Heresy is a three-way, whereas the 6000F is kind of a two-way, and I don't even think it's a two and a half way. It's just got double woofers in there. Some people would say the 6000F is incredibly scooped out in the mid-range, maybe, but I still think it sounds pretty darn good. It has a one-inch horn-loaded titanium Toita, and it mm, punches you very hard right in the jaw. And your music emotion receptors, it's pretty good, man. It'll move you, it'll get you going. So I actually liked the RP6000F better than I liked the Heresy. Now, they're deep because they need a lot of area for that bass. These are selling for, they're kind of all over the map right now. I'm looking at a pair on Amazon for $449 a piece. So 900 bucks a pair. Less than a third of the price of the Heresies. Different than the Heresies, of course, but I'll say the 6000Fs punch way harder. I wasn't very impressed by the bass response on the Heresies. I, there was some magic there with the size of the enclosure and things like that. But overall, it just didn't do much for me. The Fortes, eh, now they did something for me. I like those, but I've never heard them in my house. I only heard those at a showroom. So you can't trust you can't trust those showroom guys. You never know what you're hearing. So if you're looking at the Heresies, you can't afford them. You can take a look at the uh, Klipsch RP6000F, and if you can have some patience, you can get even a better deal on those pretty soon because they are discontinued. KLH Model 5 just did that video. Man, that speaker was very impressive. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. But they're $2,500 for a pair. That's not cheap and can be a bit cost prohibitive for people. That's why if you want the Model 5 sound in a bit of a more affordable package, it's not gonna be the same package, I look at the SVS Ultra bookshelves. Those come in at half the price of the Model 5s. There's gonna be some things the Model 5s do that the Ultras just can't do. Three-way, larger enclosure, sealed enclosure, treble mod, SVS is a two-way ported bookshelf speaker. However, they both have aluminum dome tweeters and they both have a very special top end. The SVS I think is a more traditional flatter response speaker. I think it's gonna play better in more spaces. Whereas with the Model 5s, I think you really need them closer to a wall to get that room gain to compensate for, well, the sealed enclosure. So in some regard, I think the SVS Ultra is actually a better speaker. But some of the magic from the Model 5s comes from the bigger enclosure. You can't get magic. Like, magic doesn't come for free. There's no free lunch. So if you're getting this really cool, large, immersive experience because of the big enclosure, then something else is usually missing. And in the case of the Model 5s, a bass response. You're losing a little bit of bass response. It's a great alternative. And for some people, it's going to be a better alternative than the Model 5s. They both have some of that aluminum dome magic on top. I think it was the speaker of the year last year, the Polk R200, a pretty affordable speaker. $750 is the retail price. Actually, on sale today, they're $600. So if you're in the market for a pair of Polk R200s, now is a great time to buy them because they're on sale. They're on sale till September 11th. I was racking my brain trying to actually find a more expensive alternative to this speaker that I'm about to mention that sounds better. And it was very difficult. So the alternative to the R200s, I'm gonna say is the Sony SSCS5. Problem is, the Sony SSCS5 has got a bit of magic that I just don't think, I don't think there's a better version of it. I actually use the Sony's, you can't see them, they're right here. I use the Sony's as pretty much my reference speaker when I'm testing electronics, because I know that speaker so well. And when you throw some money at it in electronics, it gets even better. If I had to pick a speaker that I thought was 
a bit better than the Sony SSCS5s, it would be the Polk R200s. It's R200s are going to give you a massive amount of bass response, way more than the Sony's could ever dream of. Has a more balanced sound signature, I think some a few less troughs in the mid-range, and the top end isn't quite as peaky in certain areas as the Sony SSCS5s. I still don't think you're missing all that much with the Sony's, except if you like to listen loud. If you're consistently listening to 85 dB or more, then the Sony's are going to show their weaknesses, whereas the Polk's, are, they're not going to break a sweat. It's a big bookshelf speaker, though. The alternative to the R200 is the R100, but those speakers don't really sound the same. The R200 does sound a bit more like the Sony SSCS5. Just grander, bigger, holds itself together at loud volumes, much deeper bass, punchier bass. I actually think the Sony might have a little bit cleaner bass, from a clarity perspective. However, the more affordable version of the Polk R200, in my opinion, would be the Sony SSCS5. The Bucard S400 Mark II. I think that's the model number. Anyway, it's the one that everybody's reviewed recently and loves. I listen to it, it's a very good speaker. I like it a lot. However, it's too thousand euros right now is as good of time as ever if you are actually interested in buying the bucards because there's parity between the dollar and the euro which means the bucards are kind of on sale anyway the more affordable alternatives to the bucard because the bucard is a bit romantic it's got very good bass very large sound stage the alternative and in this case might be the better speaker is Wharfdale linton with the stands, it comes in around $1,800. Without stands, I think it's $1,500. Even with the stands, you're getting a three-way, gorgeous, bigger speaker that I think throws a larger soundstage than the Bucards. And everything else, I think, is pretty much created equal. Now, Bucards have a fancier crossover and all that stuff, so maybe there's a little bit more clarity in the bass on the Bucards, but... I'm for me, even if I had the money, I'm still taking the Linton over the Bucard. I don't want to take anything away from the Bucard. It's a great speaker. Personally, I prefer the Linton more, and it's cheaper. That's what I would go with. Now, granted, it's not a ton cheaper $200 or $500 cheaper if you go without the stands. Still cheaper, though. If you want to go ultra cheap, the Elac VS41s. Very surprisingly good, affordable bookshelf speaker. Four inch woofer, but man oh man, that thing makes some bass for the size. And it has a similar overall sound signature to the Bucards. No, you're not gonna get the same amount of clarity. Of course not. It's a $150 speaker versus a $2,000 speaker. Neil, one of my patrons, actually has a crossover mod. I know, I don't really like talking about crossover mods much anymore, but in this case, it's legitimately one inductor that you add in there it's like a 40 or 50 dollar upgrade and so if you're so inclined reach out to me i'll get you in contact with neil anyway similar sound signature less than 10 10 percent of the price with the elec bs41 and now some notable exceptions that i don't think have any superior at their price and they're still affordable of course it's going to be the emotiva b1 plus and now the b2 plus at 250 and 450 respectively, these two speakers have a sonic characteristic that I just haven't heard on a grander scale. The clarity is absolutely mind-blowing. It's like a microscope into the music. I believe the sound signatures are fairly well balanced. And if I could only own one speaker for the rest of my life, it might be the Emotiva B2 Plus or the Sony SSCS5. Be one of those two, I know. Crazy, right? They're cheap speakers. Hey, I like them. I think they're awesome. So I think you should check those speakers out too because they don't have, or at least I haven't heard, a more expensive alternative to those speakers. I think it's going to be tough to top those two speakers. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for my Patreon. Patron-only Zooms, patron-only Discord, patron-only Facebook group. We do patron giveaway products sometimes. 
Also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal Music, links in the description. You can also use the links in the description for any of these products. Those will be affiliate links, which means if you click any buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Hey.